Hey y'all. Uh, look, I just wanted to have a quick chat about the quick little balance I did this afternoon. So I'm going to call this the explanation. So I just sort of had this idea literally now, which is why I'm here. And so I did a balance around listening and empathy and uh, basically one of the areas that is often uh, out of whack with kinesiology is the integration areas when people can't hear, they can't relax, they can't, the empathy disappears, you know, you sort of know where you are and someone else might be here and you just can't allow people to take those little baby steps to where you are and we get angry and frustrated and hurt that life is just so challenging. So so basically uh, the integration areas are bro brokers, Wernicke's, auditory integration points and rip and lip. So left integrative point and right integrative point. And within the LEAP program, the kinesiology program that I do, which was developed by Dr. Charles Krebs, and uh, basically you check them all individually, make sure they're all working. This is usually after you've made sure your logic is up and running on the left and your gestalt is up and running on the right. And then basically you want to uh, make sure the brokers to brokers are working, which means you're asking if, the inter if there are neurons connecting the left to right brokers. So the brokers is about the words that come out of your mouth and also about all the muscles associated with the words that come out of your mouth. So you would have seen people who say when they're stressed, they start, you know, talking through their teeth because they don't want to open their mouth and speak their truth. You know, so the left side is the logical stuff about the words. The right side is not only the gestalt or the creative or the emotional, but it's also the physicality of the muscles, of the jaw and the lips and everything around those teeth as you are speaking, as you are speaking your words. So that's the brokers to brokers. So you sort of stack in those points, check the uh, neurons connecting and uh, for those um, higher level kinesiologists, you can also check the other pathways as well, like the perineuronal pathways and the, um, uh, the SIPs points for the Oh, I've gotten blank. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. But anyway, so there's four pathways for people when you want to actually do the bridges from left to right sides. Anyway, the second one is the Wernicke's point. So Wernicke's is the, it's about the thoughts behind the words. So these ones can also not be working. So, you know, sometimes you're in a state of stage fright and you can't think of the word you want to say, or someone is attacking you and you shut down and then you can think of what you want to say, but you can't literally make your mouth open. You see in movies where people are in a state of terror and they open their mouth and nothing comes out. So when these uh, brokers and Wernicke's aren't communicating with each other, that makes it really challenging to speak your truth, come up with something that actually makes sense. Sometimes, sometimes we try to uh, discuss something but it's it's all muddled and jumbled and people say I don't know what you're saying because we think it's coming out in the right order but it can be a mishmash of lots of thoughts and ideas and the sentence just isn't cohesive so that's brokers is the words Wernicke's is the thoughts behind the words and of course where do our thoughts come from they come from everything we've heard everything we know everything we understand so the thoughts come from our life and like we like we always discuss, people have a different history to we, what we have to. So I'll just give an example with this because I remember one of my clients years and years and years ago when I was uh, doing some training with some people and this particular woman said, uh, she said, oh, I hate my son, can't stand him. Uh, she said, I love him, but I can't stand him. And you can imagine, uh, I think I did have about eight mothers in that room at the time, and pretty much it made, made most people, you know, their uh, hair stood up on end and thought, oh, my God, how could a mother ever say that? But the thing is, this was a boy with ADHD. He ended up um, dying at 26. I, I knew the family for quite a long time. He became a meth addict. Uh, and the schools really didn't do much to help and there was always that element of him being in trouble every single day of his poor little life 
and I always found him to be a fun kid. I and he was. He was a he was a joker and fun and naughty and uh, my sort of person. So, but uh, but nonetheless, you know. So he that ADHD personality that could not get under control really created huge issues within the household. And there was nothing. There was never any peace when he was around. So anyway, so she made this comment. But but people who haven't had children like that don't know what it's like to live with someone who has really big health challenges and really big neurological destruction or trauma or inflammation. And when we're stressed, when we're inflamed, when we're angry, when we're frustrated, our brains can be inflamed. That can be attracting histamine into our brain, which can add to more anxiety, stress, trauma, anger down the track. So, but that's a whole other story. So anyway, so you've got your brokers, you've got your Wernickes. The next one back is uh, the auditory integration points. So that's about what you're telling yourself on a daily basis, but it's also the impact of everything you're hearing. Now, sometimes, I don't know whether you're the sort of person who when there's too much noise, you can't focus and concentrate. So imagine if there was actually a uh, meeting going on and the door was creaking or the kettle was boiling or the someone slammed something you know are you the sort of person that you look away and then you pay attention and then you come back in a minute minute and go oh my god I missed the last uh, I have no idea what's going on now well that's when the auditory integration points are so stressed they don't want to miss anything going on it's usually because of survival of some sort or some deep held amygdala pattern that wants you to stay uh, fearful or on target or a, a, connected to what's going on so that you don't miss anything, which is about keeping you safe. You know, if you've had someone walk up behind you and bonk you in the head or you've been just minding your, minding your own business in a car and you get sideswiped. So the auditory integration points, they can be just turned on to 11 out of 10 all the time for some people. And I know when they don't work with me, I've been out walking in the past and sometimes these can flip as well. So I know that my auditory integration points when uh, going back a while ago, it hasn't happened in probably a dozen years, but it was one of those things where I would hear a noise over here, but the actual thing had happened over there. So then there's this real disconnect. So the brain has actually flipped. There's a real switching going on in there so for you kinesiologists out there you can actually have switching associated with with each of these integration points as well so you might need to do survival deep survival hidden deep survival celestial circuits in relation to each point depending on how traumatized or out of balance someone is so the auditory integration points is what's going on as well as what we're telling ourselves in our in our own heads and we can be our own worst enemies sometimes and then the next ones behind the ears are the rip and lip, so left integrative point and right integrative points. So that is about uh, taking in that information from, it's, it's big. So it's everything you're hearing, everything you're seeing, everything you're feeling, uh, both short-term and long-term memory, as well as being able to access short-term and long-term memory. Oh, and your brain decides where do we store all that information. And then when we want to access short-term and long-term memories associated with what we've seen, what we've heard, what we've felt. The brain goes in there. Now, if you've stored that memory in the wrong part of the brain, and the example I like to give is just say you have a beautiful, perfect day. Just imagine. And uh, and then you, you're you about to head home and a green ant bites you on the toe and it's like a 10 out of 10 in pain. And then uh, you're on your way back to the car and you're hopping and you stand on a twig, which puts a little hole in your foot. And all of a sudden, when you remember that day for the rest of your life, you can remember it to, oh, my God, that was the most painful day of my life. I can't believe I got bitten and, and you know, cut my foot open, you know, within a few minutes. And you forget the sunshine, you forget the relationship fun you had, you forget the delicious meal, you forget the uh, camaraderie and stuff with the family and friends you were with. So then the brain can actually store that whole day in a stressful part of the brain rather in that happy-go-lucky, yay, you know, got plenty of dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin type of memory. The type of hormones you're releasing at the time lays down the memories, which is uh, one of the reasons why um, memories are not accurate 
a lot of the time. We think they are and we think, you know, what we're saying. And and let's face it, it is our truth when we're giving memories, but it doesn't make it accurate, you know, and there's there's lots of evidence out there to sort of show that. So, so Broca's, Wernicke's, auditory integration points and rip and lip. So they're the integrative points. Anyway, just thought I'd give a bit of a description about them. Have a great day. Bye.